Good day. My name is Michael Rooks. I am a pilot, aviation enthusiast, and physician. I'm coming to you from the Spruce Creek Fly In community in Port Orange, Florida. Today's topic is the graveyard spiral. The graveyard spiral is a controlled flight, spiral dive, often into terrain, resulting from spatial disorientation. The graveyard spiral has several characteristics. It generally occurs when flying under visual flight rules into instrument meteorological conditions. This is associated with decreased visibility secondary to clouds, fog, mist, and or nighttime conditions. It starts with a gentle unrecognized bank of the airplane. This may be due to unequal lateral loading, such as more gas in one wing than the other. It may be caused by uncoordinated trim, cross winds, unintended control pressures, or other factors. The bank leads to loss of lift, followed by loss of altitude, increasing speed, more bank and a self-propagating spiral dive. In more severe events, the first appreciation of a problem appears to be the recognition of increasing air speed. This is noticed without appreciation of the accompanying bank. Initial corrections are limited to an increase in pitch. It also occurs that, in instances, the pilot becomes disoriented to the direction of bank and tries to correct with control inputs opposite to those needed. Spatial orientation is the ability to recognize one's position in space. Where's up, where's down, and how am I oriented in this space? We sense our orientation through visual clues, the ground, horizon, our vestibular apparatus, mechanoreceptors in our skin and stretch receptors in our muscles. The two most important are visual clues and our vestibular apparatus. In instrument meteorological conditions, the vestibular apparatus becomes our primary sense. Wikipedia lists over two dozen fatalities that are thought to be due to spatial disorientation. These include John F. Kennedy Jr., Toby Bryant, Patsy Cline, and Buddy Holly. Understanding the vestibular apparatus illuminates how the graveyard spiral can occur. The vestibular cochlear apparatus is a pair of organs embedded in the skull on either side forming the inner ear. They are approximately two and a half to three centimeters in length. They are innervated by the auditory and vestibular nerves. The vestibular nerve provides balance and acceleration information to the brain. The cochlea contains sensory cells for the perception of hearing. The vestibule contains sensors for linear acceleration. The semicircular canals provide sensors for angular acceleration or rotation. There is an anterior ring, a posterior ring and a lateral ring. The posterior ring is oriented approximately perpendicular to the anterior ring. The lateral ring is roughly perpendicular to the other two. Sectioning of the vestibule reveals two fluid-filled sacs that communicate with the semicircular canals and the cochlea. The superior sac is the utricle and the lower sac is the saccule. Each contains thickening on their wall that holds two sensory structures known as macula. The macula is approximately 2 square millimeters each. The two maculae are at approximate right angles. The utricle macula senses linear acceleration in a forward and backward plane. The saccule macula senses linear acceleration in the up and down direction. Each macula consists of a layer of supporting cells with interspersed sensory hair cells. The hair cells have stereocilia, hair-like structures, that produce a 90 to 100 Hz impulse to the brain when at rest. The stereocilia are embedded in a gelatinous membrane. This membrane has calcium carbonate crystals embedded in it giving it added weight. These are known as otoliths. Bending of the hair-like structures increases the impulse frequency in one direction and decreases it in the other. Linear acceleration of the macula results in displacement of the otolithic membrane secondary to inertia in the calcium carbonate otoliths. This results in bending of the hair-like structures and a change in impulse frequency to the brain. This is interpreted as linear acceleration. Angular acceleration is perceived through the fluid-filled semicircular canals. Each canal, or ring, 
has a dilated area near the vestibule known as the ampulla. Within the ampulla, is another hair cell structure, the cupula. The cupula hair cells are deflected by fluid movement in the canals. Angular acceleration, or tilt, in the sagittal plane is detected by the anterior ring. Acceleration in the coronal plane is detected in the posterior ring. And acceleration in the transverse plane is detected in the lateral ring. Lee and others established a tilt sensitivity for the ampulla in 2020. This averaged 1.5 degrees per second with a range of 0.7 to 3. A standard rate turn is 3 degrees per second. A 90 degree turn over 3 minutes would fall beneath this threshold. Kingman in 2005 established a linear acceleration sensitivity for lateral movement of 6.5 cm per second squared. This is less than 0.07 g. An important fact for any pilot is the simple truth that humans don't feel gravity. An individual floating in a closed box in space feels no acceleration. If a force is acted upon the box, the individual will feel acceleration through the inertial reaction of his body. He infers the force. He feels the acceleration. If that individual drifts into a gravitational field, the box will accelerate. He will feel no acceleration and no force. Isaac Newton would say this is because he and the box are all accelerated at the same rate. Albert Einstein would say that gravity is an illusion. What he feels is inertial motion in a mass-warping spacetime continuum. In either event, he doesn't feel gravity. In order to experience the acceleration of gravity we must be supported by an opposing force. The ground beneath us, or the lift of an airplane. In essence, the ground and plane are accelerating us in the opposite direction of gravity. This allows the macula to sense linear acceleration. Without an opposing force, we are in free fall and experience no acceleration and no gravity. An airplane in level flight produces thrust. It also produces drag. Thrust is a force. Drag is a reaction to thrust. It represents heat, turbulence, and friction. It diminishes thrust, but the plane won't fly backwards if you turn off the engine. Part of the engine thrust will be converted into lift by the airfoils. If the acceleration from the lift is equal to the acceleration of gravity, the plane will remain in level flight. What the pilot feels is his inertia to the acceleration of the lift force against gravity, not the gravity itself. The lift force will actually be the sum of gravity acceleration through the plane center of gravity and the downward thrust of negative tail lift. The lift force will be in the range of 1.1 g but the lift acceleration remains the same. If the plane accelerates while maintaining level flight, the lift vector will rotate forward and the reactive vector, what we perceive as gravity, will rotate backwards. In a turn, similar forces and reactions come into play. In coordinated flight, level and at constant speed, the plane's lift is perpendicular to the wings. The reactive force passes through the center of the plane, verified on the turn coordinator inclinometer. The vertical and horizontal components of this force represent the vertical lift and centripetal forces respectively. The inertial centrifugal reaction and gravity are the reactive components. The only force the pilot feels is the perpendicular lift. The pilot only feels the reactive acceleration perpendicular to the wings. In an uncoordinated slip, the lower wing rotates ahead of the upper wing gaining more lift. This produces a banking rotation force on the wings changing the acceleration vector and the perception of gravity towards the inside of the turn. With a skid, the upper wing leads the lower wing. The reactive acceleration vector and perception of gravity moves to the outside of the turn. With this understanding, the events in a graveyard spiral become more apparent. The initial event is a gentle unrecognized banking turn without any recognized control inputs. Without aileron input and the resultant adverse yaw, this will likely result in a nearly coordinated turn or slight skid. 
The increasing bank will result in increasing centripetal force and decreasing vertical lift. This will result in loss of altitude, increasing pitch down and further bank. The first recognition of a problem may well be the increasing speed sensation. Pulling on the yoke without leveling the wings will only tighten the turn, with minimal effect on vertical lift. The increasing bank rotation force, the increasing slipstream effect on the tail and gyroscopic precession will all tend to worsen any skid that is present. What the pilots feels at this moment is a downward acceleration and a bank to the right. If left aileron and left rudder are applied to correct the assumed bank, the bank will worsen, as will the skid and the sensation of a right bank. The actual situation will be a worsening spiral dive. To this point, we've pretty much been looking at linear acceleration in the vestibule. There are many who believe the semicircular canals play a role in the incorrect response to the left bank. The thinking goes that friction causes the fluid in the canals to start circulating towards a left turn. If the turn is arrested, the inertia in the fluid will produce the sensation of a right turn or bank. It's true that spinning a person at high speeds and abruptly stopping will produce this phenomenon. I am dubious that a gradual tilt over several minutes at a rate below the sensitivity of the cupula would be able to produce this phenomenon. At any rate, this explanation appears mute looking at the previous discussion. Preventive measures, don't fly visual flight rules into instrument meteorological conditions. If you do, don't trust your senses, particularly regarding bank angle. If you have an autopilot, turn it on and let it fly the plane. Learn to fly instrument flight rules and practice in visual meteorological conditions, even if you don't become IFR certified. Thank you for your time and attention. I sincerely hope that you find this material enlightening.